Kicking It in the 757 is brought to you by the Mambo Room Cultural Dance Center and by McCown Pressure Wash and Painting, home of the worry-free guarantee. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kicking It in the 757. I'm your host, Kevin F. Coming up this week on the show... Virginia Opera kicks off their new season with the epic story of Samson and Delilah, and we'll have a preview. We're making shrimp and scallops with Chef Alvin Williams in a new edition of The 5-Minute Chef. We're going to travel back in time to the cocktail zone, as well as introducing you to Chef Andrea of Andrea's La Bella and Gent. All that and more coming up on Kicking It in the 757. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to spend summers in Sicily? Maybe experience the taste of Sicily? Well, if you have, you're in luck because we're here tonight at Andrea's La Bella in Ghent. I'm Andrea De Carlo, chef and owner of Andrea's La Bella in Ghent in Norfolk, Virginia. So we opened up in December of 2007. We'll be celebrating our 10 year anniversary here soon. I worked for my mother in Virginia Beach. Uh, she owned the restaurant for 21 years. I was a La Bella Italia on Laskin Road. I started out the uh, dishwasher, moved up to prep, salads, pizzas, and eventually I was the executive chef. My mom, my sister, my brother, we all worked there, so we, a lot of heart went into the food. Uh, the customers come in, they'd always see one of us there, and you know, we really connected with people through the food. You know, the recipes from Sicily that my mother brought over, we were preparing all the time, and um, you know, we cooked it like we were gonna eat the food, and that's what people really liked. So I was born in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. We had a bakery growing up. Um, the mentality back then was you got to speak Italian. You're not Italian if, if you don't speak it. So they used to send me every summer to Sicily to spend my summers there with my aunt to learn. My aunt and my uncle, they owned business in a little town in Sicily called Missilmeri. And then they had a little house in the country which was about 15 minutes up in the mountain that they would spend their summers. So it was kind of a vacation home, but really what it was is them producing all the food that they were gonna use in the winter. So they were growing tomatoes. We would steam them, peel them, jar them. They were harvesting olives to make oil, the grapes for the wine, you know, the eggplant, the squashes. They were picking those and canning them, you know, grilling them and canning them, freeze drying some because over there it's not like you go to a big mega supermarket and get everything year round. Tomatoes in Sicily, you only get them in the summer or you get them sun dried or jarred, you know, freshly jarred the rest of the time. So I would spend my summers with my uncle Vincenzo just doing all that, you know, and I was a kid and I didn't, I didn't really understand what I was doing until I started to get older and really realized, wow, I'm, I'm, not only do I love to cook, but I'm firsthand getting an education on how it was done 200 years ago. And me being, you know, born in 1978, that's unheard of. Like, people talk about farm to table now like it's a new thing, but really farm to table was the only way that it was done before because that's, that's the only way they knew how to do it. You know, you grow it, you pick it, you barter with the, the cheese guy and the, the dairy guy and the pasta guy, you trade stuff, and that's how you made meals every day. So when everybody in the town would be sitting down at the same time, even though you're in separate houses, Essentially, it's almost like everybody's eating together because, you know, uh, Giacomino's got my uncle's peeled tomatoes and Tonino's got my uh, you know, uncle's uh, grilled eggplant and we have Tonino's cheese and Giacomino's uh, uh, fresh pasta. La Bella in Italian means the beautiful. So in my mind, it was perfect because I was trying to create the beautiful experience, the, the beautiful restaurant, the beautiful dish. So every time I approach doing anything, I keep La Bella in mind because I want it to be the most beautiful thing anyone's ever seen. You come in, you know, we have an extensive wine list. Uh, we always change it, uh, focus on Sicilian wines. And it, it really pairs well with my personality, to be honest, and the personality of the food. So when you come here, you're gonna get fresh fish, 
um, three or four different choices, a lot of fresh pastas to go along with it, along with your New York Italian classic dishes like your polo parmigiana or your lasagna alla bolognese. When we shop, we, we try to get you know, the, the prosciutto from Parma, Italy, the marsala from Marsala, you know, the saffron that we use comes from Sicily because for me it's a, it's a, a key ingredient because it brings the personality of the, of the island into the food. Uh, the detail is everything, you know, anything that I buy or that comes through the door, um, it's not, you know, drop the box, write the check and the driver's on his way. We open everything up, I pick the heads of lettuce up, I feel to see if they're limp or if they're crispy because I get an indication of how fresh it is and what it's going to look like three or four hours later on the plate. Right down to my olive oil, I, I, I taste olive oils on a weekly basis like I taste wine. If I start with bad ingredients, no matter how great a chef I am, I'm not a magician. I can't make the food magically become good if I'm using terrible ingredients. We have an oven and we bake our bread here, we make our pizza, we, we bake some of our cakes, some, we, we do catering. Making the bread fresh every day is very important because it's the single one thing that the guests are going to get no matter what. If the uh, bread is terrible, they're gonna be like, wow, the thing that they put on the table the first time is terrible. And they're gonna be like, what else are they doing that's not good? So those are the little things that kind of represent who we are and what we do um, here as far as satisfying the guests. So the Linguinica Levangeli, which is our linguine clam sauce, is probably our biggest seller. When we cook the clams in the sauce, we put them in there. The clam tells me when it's ready. I don't tell it when it's ready, so when that shell opens up, it releases all that juice, and I know exactly at that point that that sauce is ready to be married with the pasta and put on the plate to give to the guest. The pollo portofino, it's a dish that actually we as a family kind of invented uh, in the restaurant. So it's uh, you know a, a white chicken breast stuffed with prosciutto di parma and our fresh mozzarella. So if you really look at it, it's kind of a take on the cordon bleu, but it's really our version. And we uh, we we pound it shut, we sauté it in a mushroom white wine marsala wine sauce blend. And it's nice because it's it's a it's a hearty dish, and the flavors that are in the sauce uh, kind of uh, create this really sort of. Uh, aromatic dish and when you eat it and you, you cut it, the juices from inside the polo portofino go into the sauce and the pasta and you kind of get this different experience with every bite that you take. Insalata frutta di mare, which is known to Sicilians as seafood salad, a staple on every table in Bensonhurst and Sicily for Sunday dinner. So it's a fresh octopus. I use Spanish octopus because it's really good with calamari, shrimp, and uh, garlic, uh, oil, lemon, and celery in it. And we cook it and we marinate it and we plate it. And it's, to me, it's to die for. It's my favorite dish on the menu because I love octopus. The other staple that people absolutely love is the spaghetti alla carbonara. Um, you know, it's a, it's a Roman, Southern Italian Roman staple, a very simple dish to make, but it packs a lot of flavor. And it's really a simple sauce that's just made up of an egg yolk and all the ingredients. And then you take the uh, pancetta, imported pancetta, you render that down in a pan, and when you cook the pasta, you put it in a little pasta water, and it's all these like three or four different components, and when you throw it in, the odor and the, the ingredients almost start to kind of sing and marry together as everything coats the pasta. And when you put it on the plate, it looks beautiful and, and the guests love it. It's probably our number one selling pasta dish. So the desserts, um, you know, my favorite is the cannoli. So I use uh, my mother's recipe, that's her father's recipe, that's her, you know, great-grandfather's recipe. It's, uh, uh, you know, ricotta, sweetened with a little bit of sugar, some chocolate chips, and, and you know, you mix it and then you stuff it into um, a cannoli shell that we get imported from Italy because, um, you know, they do, it, they do it good and these ones that we use are really tasty. And it's simple, you know, we top it with a little candied fruit, a little powder sugar, we decorate the plate nice. One of the best things about La Bella is the fact that while it's located in the heart of Ghent, just a block off 21st Street here on 22nd, it makes for really easy access and also ample amounts of parking so you literally can park and walk right in. But my favorite thing about La Bella is the fact that for nights like this evening, 
It's got great outdoor patio seating. We have a, a, a main dining room that's got the bar in it, and then we have a separate dining room that's a private dining room. It's a pretty wide open space, you know, beautiful colors with some really nice lighting that we use for. Um, I mean, we, we've done, I've done my best friend's engagement parties in that side, my sister-in-law's graduation party, along with customers that proposed in the restaurant, had their rehearsal dinner in the restaurant and then came back and had their party for the baptism of their kids in the same exact room. So that's kind of uh, getting back to how we kind of build these relationships with not just the guests individually, but with the family and the generations to come. Well, the thing I love most about La Bella is the fact that I get to feed people a little bit of my personality in every dish. Um, and specifically here, like I could do it in other restaurants, but specifically here because I put so much, literally blood, sweat, and tears into the whole process of building the restaurant and creating what I have here today. So when the people come in and eat and the, the, the smile on their face when they bite into the chicken meatball, or the uh, veal marsala and they just, you can almost see them like look up and maybe it triggers a memory of their grandmother or that trip that they took or just a meal that they had totally unrelated to Italian food that was a special moment and that's, that's what's most special to me about La Bella and Gant. If I wanted to be a millionaire, I would have been a doctor. I would have been a lawyer. You know, with these looks, I would have been a movie star. But I chose to, to cook because I, it's literally what I love to do. Every day I come to work, it's, it's my passion. So I don't even feel like I'm at work. I just feel like I'm doing what I love to do and, and the, the customers are the beneficiary. Yes, I've been coming here for quite a few years and it's one of the few Italian, authentic Italian restaurants that I approve of. Being from New York and Boston, it's very hard to find Italian food in the South. <laughs> That's actually really true. So, this, this <laughs> is, the, this is a prime spot. Eggplant. <laughs> favorite lasagna. Today was spinach lasagna for me. Sometimes it's ravioli. We have a, my granddaughter from Texas comes and only gets ravioli, always. Not to mention, bread with oil and vinegar <laughs> is a meal. And keep it coming. Love the flour on the crust. It's like, yes, you gotta have the, the, I'm going to give you a little, little yes. trick here. You got to do it. Got to break your bread and dunk and mandra. Mm. I've never actually physically been to Sicily, but after my experience tonight here at Andrea's La Bella and Ghent, I think I've come pretty doggone close. Whether it is from the great house-made sangria, the appetizers, uh, the entrees and of course the homemade desserts including cannolis with cannoli shells really from Sicily. <laughs> That's fanatical. Do yourself a favor. Come see what the buzz is about here in Ghent. It's a true, true experience and if you've ever wondered how the Sicilians uh, entertain, party and eat and drink, well you'll find out if you pay a visit here to Andre De Carlo and his people. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Pleasure's all mine. Pleasure's all mine. Let me ask you this. When you're out kicking it, where's that at? I'm kicking it in the 757. You notice how he was very precise in that, just like all his dishes he makes. Do yourself a favor and pop in here to Andrea's La Bella and Ghent. You'll be glad that you did. And we're going to be real glad now because the crew and I are going to enjoy ourselves. Some great, great food. Cheers. Salute. Salute. What he said. Coming up, we're going to get a preview of the epic story of Samson and Delilah as the Virginia Opera kicks off their new season. Okay, it's decision time for your next painting or pressure washing job. So make the right call to McCown Pressure Wash and Painting and our all-star lineup. McCown Pressure Wash and Painting. And don't forget to ask about our college football special.
We aren't sponsors of NASCAR teams, but we will sponsor your next do-it-yourself project. Just go to taylorsdoit.com or text Taylors to 42828 and receive a $10 sponsorship towards your next project with us. I'm Joe Taylor. For 86 years, Taylors Do It Centers have been your neighborhood partner for home and garden projects right here in Tidewater. So when it's time for your next project, let's do it together. Yeah. Oh, and that NASCAR thing, it would be pretty cool though. The Virginia Opera kicks off their 2017 season with the epic story of Samson and Delilah, October 1st and 3rd at the Harrison Opera House in Norfolk. Here's a preview. For those that don't know, opera was the beginning of the movies because opera is where movie directors at the beginning of Hollywood took their inspiration. How? You have a story that's being told and you underscore it with music. When was the last movie you saw that didn't have music? I can tell you, zero, they don't exist. So what this is, is this is a drama story that is emotionally charged with music. For that, we need a phenomenal cast that knows the music and knows how to do that, but also plays as actors. And I'm very lucky that we have that. It's rich choral music, um, great drama, a, a wonderfully accessible story, of course the Old Testament story of Samson and Delilah, and I just thought this is something our audiences will just love. So the interesting thing about Samson, if we're setting the show in a world that feels like the 1930s, he has one foot in an ancient and respected tradition and one foot in a modern place. And he's being pulled in two different directions, uh, with his heart, as far as he feels about Delilah, and with his faith. So Samson is a Nazarite, which is a historical thing. There are still Nazarites uh, among us today. And they take a vow to not cut their hair and not drink the fruit of the vine and not be around uh, bodies. And all of those things happen to Samson as one by one his faith is sort of stripped away from him and then he summons his courage back at the very end. Delilah is, I like to say she has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. <laughs> from the beginning, she has it in her sights to destroy Samson. She has the whole thing planned, the seduction, the what she's going to sing to him, she's going to lead him on the whole way, but it's from the beginning she's going to make him believe that she really loves him so that she can get her end goal. It's a very current story. It, it shows the dangers of tribal mentality, uh, one group of people against the other, and you see how they treat each other, how horribly they treat each other, and uh, yeah, just kind of reflection of, even though it was so long ago, it's a reflection of today. It's very motion picturesque at times. I think the, especially act two, there's the storm brewing, uh, Delilah's trying to seduce Samson, and you hear all of this, this rumbling, the earth quaking with, with God's wrath, and there's a storm you hear in, in the thunder, and, and all this stuff, it's just, it's just, it's really seductive music uh, for the ears, and I think our audiences are just gonna eat it up. Creating the magic fire in, in the Valkyrie and a collapsing temple in Samson and Delilah are two, two challenges that every designer uh, hopes to be able to, to accomplish at some point in their career. And I think it will hopefully leave people gasping for breath and leaping to their seats to applaud at the end of the show. I want them to come away with the, the beauty and the excitement and the passion of opera in general and be moved. Coming up, we've got a new edition of The 5-Minute Chef, featuring Chef Alvin Williams of Cobalt Grill.
stuff is breaking down all around me How to get it fixed is starting to confine me There's only one place that I can depend on My do-it center store will help get the job done I love, we love, do it yourself and I love, we love Money we're saving, here's where I get it all At my do-it center store Give me a hammer, hand me a saw I'm not slowing down till I've done it all I love saving money and time at my do-it center store Looking for a quick and easy meal to make with ingredients you can buy from your local neighborhood grocery store? Well, Shelf Alvin Williams shows us just that with his Shrimp and Scops Risotto Dish on this edition of The 5-Minute Chef. I'm Alvin Williams here at Cobalt Grill Restaurant in Virginia Beach. And for this segment of Five Minute Chef, we're gonna be making sauteed shrimp and scallop risotto. So to start, a little olive oil, my saute pan. We got these beautiful scallops here that we're gonna sear. So the trick is to get the oil a nice medium heat. You know, food likes to move naturally, so you'll see it start to brown and caramelize on the base of it, and that's when you know it's ready to turn. And I think we have that right here. So that's getting nice and brown there. So these scallops take a little bit longer to cook than the shrimp, so we start with the scallops first. And then we add the shrimp into the same pan. It's all good seafood flavor, so one pan is fine. And that way I don't upset my dishwasher. And this is a two pan dish. So in the other pan, we're gonna have our sun-dried tomatoes, some baby spinach leaves, we're gonna put just a little touch of oil in there just to get it going. And while these are breaking down, we're gonna add some risotto. So this is um, a brorio rice that we've cooked and a little stock, pre-cooked. We go ahead and we heat that up with the baby spinach leaves and the sun-dried tomatoes. And this is where the richness comes in the dish. We put a little heavy cream in here. Let all those flavors come together. So all these flavors are marrying the tomatoes, the spinach. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the shrimp over. You can see this nice natural caramelization on the seafood. To tie this together, we have some shredded parmesan. We just let that cream reduce a little bit, bring all those flavors together. Our seafood is shrimp and our scallops are ready. Nice and caramelized, nice and plump, not dry. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plate this. It goes right in, right into our bowl. In the cobalt, we like to use nice warm plates because we believe that you put warm food in a warm plate, it keeps it warm throughout your meal. And we're gonna go ahead, put our seafood on. Absolutely delicious. And then we finish that off with a little shaved Pecorino Romano cheese and a little fresh basil. This is our sauteed shrimp and scallop risotto that we have here at Cobalt Grill, Virginia Beach, Hilltop North. And that is your five minute chef. It's time to go on a journey, a journey to a place where craft cocktails are not only correctly made, but given a history as well. So join us as we visit the Cocktail Zone. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to most men. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between sweet, sugary beverages and the burning heat of raw ethanol between science and the Long Island iced tea. This is the dimension of imagination. It is a realm which we call the cocktail zone. 
There was a time in this country when the old-fashioned was made with muddled fruits. A dark and strange time filled with unnaturally colored cherries and scattered piles of white sugar packets. There is a place, however, that has never known such a time. A place of balance. A place of natural sweetness. A place known as the cocktail zone. This is the original gangster of cocktails. It was originally defined by the Balance and Columbia Repository in 1806 as a spirit of any kind, sugar, water, bitters. Four simple ingredients, so that's what we're going to work with today. Starting off with Angostura bitters, it's the best aromatics, the most popular, most common, very easy to find. In a dash, four quick dashes. Next up for the sugar, bar spoon of Demerara sugar, which is rich, simple syrup. So we're going to do this as a two to one syrup. And we use bullet rye. Rye is usually better than bourbon for this, just because there's a nice spice that does shine through all the other stuff that we put in here, and it's highlighted very well. Lastly, water comes from ice. So we fill up our mixing glass all the way with ice. More ice is better than less. And just give it a few quick stirs. We're going to do this before we pour it into a glass, usually over an ice sphere or some other really large ice cube. So the point of this is to chill it without over diluting it, which is why you want more ice as opposed to less. Right over our rock. Last touch, a nice garnish. We use an orange twist. Express right over the surface, right around the rim, dropped in the drink. Perfect. That is the old fashioned. Another drink, crafted to perfection, as it should be, in the cocktail soap. Enjoy. Well, that's a wrap on another episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we did making it. And remember, you can get social with us on Facebook, as well as checking out past episodes and individual destination segments on our website anytime, anywhere. So until next time, we're kicking it in the 757. And so should you.